everyone, and welcome to the 96th episode in our AI and You podcast series. Today is Thursday, September 29th, 2022, and I'm your host, Vikar Saidi. I'm a computer scientist and engineer, a lecturer, and a consultant. I'm also the author of several books. My most recent book is about artificial intelligence and is titled The Genome Affair. The Genome Affair is a speculative work. It examines what the world might be like if some of the more extraordinary capabilities forecast to be realized in AI over the next 20 to 30 years were actually realized today. Given the growing list of frightening existential threats humankind now faces, the book pays particular attention to the impact AI is expected to have on world affairs. The book is available in ebook format for those who prefer to read on a digital device, but it's also available in a high quality paperback edition. The Genome Affair is available on Amazon, so I hope you'll take the time to read it and to leave a review. Amazon book reviews are very helpful for writers. I'm very interested in how science and technology influence world affairs and the big questions facing humankind. Studying at the confluence of the great disciplines of human history, political science and thought, international affairs, science and technology, offers a deep understanding and pedagogically important lessons of how advances in human endeavor have influenced and impacted civilization. I'm available to give talks on artificial intelligence and its related technologies, and on the impact AI is expected to have, or is already having, on our world. If you'd like to get in touch with me to arrange a web-based event, or consulting meeting with your company or organization, you can find my contact info in the podcast notes below. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with others if you find the content valuable. Thank you. And now, on to today's podcast. In our last podcast, episode 95, I spoke about irrationality and intolerance, humankind's two greatest liabilities in the age of AI. In today's podcast, episode 96, I'll speak about sustaining democracy in the age of AI. These are the rem remarks from a recent symposium I participated in at Elmhurst University. Let's get started. Is democracy worth saving? Quite emphatically, yes. It remains the most successful ideology of governance we have ever seen. However, it must be said that if authoritarian regimes have a credible vision accompanied by a good strategic and tactical plan, then they can move very quickly to implement their vision. The society will have no say in the matter, be it small or large, but nevertheless, they may be substantial beneficiaries of the authoritarian's vision. However, if that vision is flawed, the lack of checks and balances, which is a hallmark of authoritarian regimes, means no one in other areas of government in the press, in civil society organizations, or individual citizens will be able to voice concern, since doing so is likely to have very severe consequences. Thus, the outcomes can be very bad for an authoritarian nation and its society and can even pose an existential risk. There have been several recent examples of the consequences of unchecked governance including China's one-child policy, which is expected to result in a dramatic contraction in the population. The consensus, consensus amongst demographers is that the Chinese population will decline from its peak of 1.4 billion in 2019 to about 540 million by 2100. Or consider the Chinese Communist Party's decision not to acquire American vaccines and the socioeconomic consequences of that decision. And Russia's invasion of Ukraine will make that nation a pariah in the West for decades 
and generations to come. Entrepreneurs and investors are likely to view commercial opportunities as too problematic from a brand reputation, foreign direct investment, insurance risk, and trust perspective. There are many more examples of significant failures of unchecked authoritarian regimes from recent history, and we can address these in greater detail during the discussion if there's interest from the audience. Of course, in normal circumstances, liberal democracies cannot move nearly as fast as authoritarian regimes. But the many hurdles imposed by the fourth estate or free press, intergovernmental agencies and branches, as well as civil society organizations, serve to check and vociferously critique every aspect of proposed plans before much harm can be done. Further, science and technology, once integrated into governance, offer free societies the potential to dramatically improve the quality of governance. For example, surveillance systems and technology, enabled by artificial intelligence, can monitor the actions and behavior of officials across the public and private sector. Then, all the men and women seated in positions of authority influence and power, and thus charged with the public trust and administration of public finances can be kept in check. This offers society unprecedented transparency. The misdeeds of officials can quickly be exposed and they can be held accountable based upon irrefutable evidence. Unfortunately, the very same suite of advanced Fourth Industrial Revolution capabilities can further strengthen the hands of authoritarian regimes. Digital authoritarianism or datocracy, the comprehensive surveillance of a society enabled by gathering their digital and physical data, will for the very first time in history facilitate an environment of domestic totalitarianism as well as hegemony over other external polities, both near and far. Just imagine how much control and influence an authoritarian regime enabled by datocracy can have over people in power throughout the world just by threatening to expose their adolescent improprieties and indiscretions or other more egregious misbehavior from their more recent professional lives. But the risk to liberal democracies from these very same technologies are growing at an alarming rate as the socio-political and socio-economic implications of AI continue to proliferate in the public and private sectors. Two years ago, labor economists in Germany forecast that by the end of this decade, 800 million jobs around the world would be adversely affected by artificial intelligence, and many of the impacted workers are residents of the developed world. These liberal democracies comprise a constellation of nations situated at the apex of civilization. They are advanced, prosperous, and they are peaceful. They have the world's best academic, medical, scientific, and technological institutions and industrial organizations. They also have the best civil societies, arts and humanities, literary and sporting societies, and so much more. Above all, these nations are characterized by their observance of the rule of law for ordinary citizens, as well as for their leaders. And finally, they're known for their world-class economies a commercial culture and environment that have provided the highest standard of living anywhere in the world since the end of World War II. But as embodied artificial intelligence relentlessly permeates highly automated factories with state-of-the-art robotics, thus eliminating the jobs these workers have always known, jobs that gave them dignity, ordinary people increasingly find themselves with few options other than to scrape out a living, toiling in Amazon, 
distribution warehouses where their bathroom breaks are humiliatingly timed, or other insecure and poorly paid positions in the hospitality sector. The implications for those working in jobs in accounting, finance, healthcare, or even software engineering are also facing implacable competition from disembodied AI-enabled software systems that can process data and perform tasks one million times faster than the brightest amongst our species. This impending future strips too many ordinary people of their honor and dignity, and it substantially squelches their motivation to actively participate in the democratic process. Eventually, their belief in the superiority of, liber of liberal democracies vis-a-vis -vis authoritarianism will wane. In their own experience, the empirical evidence for the superiority of democracy is simply no longer compelling. And of course, we know all too well that this will dangerously undermine the future of a liberal democratic order everywhere. As a consequence, many ordinary citizens are likely to fall victim to misinformation, or worse, disinformation, and other corrosive, irresponsible rhetoric as it insidiously and unavoidably spreads across social media. These are ideas and notions that have no basis in fact, but are nevertheless curated by AI-enabled social media with the goal of maximally stimulating the human limbic system and the emotions and impulses that reside therein. Consider, for example, Cambridge Analytica. This is how social media companies optimize engagement. They shoulder little responsibility for the integrity or veracity of the content they unrelentingly present. This persistent attack on our mammalian brain makes us angry, frustrated, and in some cases primes us for retribution against one or more demonized minorities and other fictitious enemies. It is a very dangerous environment that provides a fertile and optimal domain for the genesis and cultivation of demagogues. Secretary of State George Shultz was fond of wearing a tie imprinted with the phrase, democracy is not a spectator sport. Historically, workers in the developed world have been accustomed to living comfortable, hopeful lives, and this gave them a strong reason to believe in the superiority of liberal democracy vis-à-vis -vis other forms of government. The empirical evidence supporting their belief was overwhelming and palpable, and so they filled churches and community halls to hear the encouraging rhetoric of elected officials and to present themselves when summoned at the polling booth. So now, if we are to overcome the aforementioned negative trends and protect democracy for the future of our children and grandchildren, a continuous institutional process resulting in a holistic analysis of the numerous complex and nuanced factors impacting democracy must be debated and the various solutions evaluated. We need to approach the problem in an interdisciplinary and near constant manner, since there are too many today who seek to undermine democracy, not because they have superior, superior ideas, ideals, or methods of governance, but rather because they seek wealth and power for themselves and their nascent and oppressive dynasties. In closing, the unipolar world order of the past several decades has been beneficial for many, but also damaging for some. If we seek to resurrect and sustain that order and repair its deficiencies, we will need to act with the highest possible sense of urgency. Perhaps most importantly, this endeavor will require participation and sacrifice from all quarters. There is no doubt that our system of liberal democracy 
is worth improving and protecting. No other ideology in the past 12,000 years since the birth of civilization has ever come close from the perspective of positive outcomes. But sustaining this extraordinary system of governance will have a price that we must collectively summon the will to pay. Thank you for spending some time with me. I'm trying to follow the TED Talk format, and so I'm keeping these podcasts under 20 minutes. Let me know what you think. I hope you'll find these insights into artificial intelligence helpful, and I hope you'll read my new book, The Genome Affair. It's on Amazon. Until next time, then, this has been the AI and You podcast with author Vikara Saidi.